All right. Um, so I think we'll just go ahead and start. And what time is it? It's twelve thirteen. Um, I'm just going to go over the minutes real quick, uh, just some highlights from our monthly meeting uh, from February. And we'll do attendance here in just a minute and let people introduce themselves once um, we make sure everyone's going to be on the call. Um, so Val, we had Val Crail, Julie Cahoon, Anna Stalker, uh, Debbie Dijak, Teresa Holt from the, she's the long-term care ombudsman in Alaska. Melissa Heflin and Joseph Ray were on the call in February. And so Val Crail gave us an update on the seal oil. Um, which there's some pretty exciting things going on with that. Um, let's see. And then the Anchorage Native Tribal Health Consortium um, in last 30 days had worked with some stroke. Uh, we have uh, residents in the Alaska hospital to provide traditional food to residents who were basically not eating. And so they were approaching food more like an activity. Activity. Um, so elders could participate in the traditional luncheon. Um, and then she talked about, um, I think I spelled it wrong, uh, salmon soup. I, I don't know if I got that right. Deer, fry bread, and Eskimo ice cream. And so it was kind of a potluck approach. And so we talked about giving residents what's important to them and also some safety issues with food. And uh, Val made himself available as an expert to help other facilities, which is really good to know. Uh, KAI gave an update. I gave an update on our pending grant. QIOs gave an update. Um, Teresa was going to follow up with the tribal ombudsman to join the collaborative. Um, so she just gave us a little um, understanding of ombudsman and how every state has an ombudsman. Um, they may have a local or a regional ombudsman, and some of them have volunteers. Um, and Joseph reported on a bill in New Mexico to restrict ombudsmen. Um, so their direction is to work on issues the resident wants to work on, and they work on building relationships and resolving issues. Um, Uh, we talked a little bit about communication with boards, um, and we talked about under knowing um, let's see. Let's see. understanding our community associations, uh, where is the leadership group, and how did they advise the tribe? Um, let's see. And talked a little bit about why people maybe don't want to come into the nursing home. Um, I know there's a, um, I can just tell you a quick story. Last, um, next week, one of our um, villages is having a geriatric health fair, and they asked me to talk on dementia. And I said, well, I'd be happy, you know, we talked about it. And she said, well, I said, well, what topics are you interested in? And he said, well, maybe something about keeping residents or keeping elders out of nursing homes. I said, well, I, I work in one. <laughs> but, you know, I think there is that um, feeling out there. And so Joseph Ray was sharing some things about understanding aging and disability and dealing with ageism and some of the fear that sometimes goes along with that. Um, and so it's important to keep raising aging issues with the community and with leadership. Um, and so we asked Dr. Blythe Winchester to speak today, but she's not able to do that. She will be able to speak on our April 20th call. And uh, we do have Hannah Stocker here when we get to that point to talk a little bit about some of the work that the University of Arizona GWEP is doing, which is the Geriatric Workforce Enhancement Program, which is a grant. Um, and then we did have a steering committee um, meeting on March 12th. And um, we had Julie Cahoon, Keith, uh, from our uh, QIO here in Arizona, Tammy and Carly from Morningstar, and they actually recruited Sunny Ray Grant, who is their MDS coordinator, 
Lisa Johnson, uh, Jonathan Collins, Val, Creel, and myself were on that call just this past Monday. And um, so I'm going to let um, some of those folks that are on this call just give their updates again, especially KAI, because we have some webinars coming up in June and July. And we have a best practice uh, paper due again on June 1st. And remember that those best practice papers are going on to the um, cms.gov uh, website. Okay. I also have some um, information from Tammy and Carly um, that will be forwarded on um, some of the new FEMA training and the new disaster plan training and serv in services that are required now. And she sent me a document, but it's 821 pages, so I'm not sure <laughs> if y'all want to wade through that. But um, I will forward the link, so at least you have um, that information. Okay. Let's see, did anyone else join the call? Anyone else join the call? Okay, so I'm just going to let everyone introduce themselves that are on the call. We'll just go around with introductions. So I'm Debbie Dijak. I'm out at Archie Hendricks as the education coordinator. I'll take the next cue there. Um, this is Lisa Johnson. I'm with the QIO in Alaska, and my job is to support the Nursing Home Collaborative um, initiative. My name is Julie Cahoon. I'm with Kaufman and Associates, and we contract with the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services um, to provide support to the Nursing Home Collaborative. Thank you, Julie. I'm Jonathan Collins, also from Kaufman and Associates. Okay. And Jonathan was actually at the annual meeting that we had in Minneapolis last November, which was really nice. Thank you. Thank you for having me there. <clears throat> Anyone else on the call? Anna Stacker from the University of Arizona. I'm program coordinator for the Geriatrics Workforce Enhancement Program. <laughs> Thank you, Anna. And Hannah actually did a really nice uh, webinar. Um, I'll send you all a link to that um, once a month. The University of Arizona um, Aging Center on Aging does a geriatric webinar. And Hannah did it specifically on, um, uh, well, I'll let you tell them, Hannah. It was on nursing homes um, and, um, what was it on? <laughs> Antibiotic use. And, and psychotic use for the, uh, the treatment and the behavioral symptoms of uh, dementia. And the, the focus of the, the talk was about the facility characteristics that are associated with the use of antipsychotic medications, so that being, uh, for example, the geographic uh, characteristics such as location, uh, the physical characteristics such as um, <clears throat> size, facility size, occupancy characteristics such as type of occupancy uh, and uh, amount of occupancy, and as well as market characteristics including presence of competition and also uh, quality characteristics including uh, the number of citations the facility may have, and how these all affect uh, the use of antipsychotics, either in a positive or negative way. So, Hannah, when, when you talk about the um, care partner sheets and the um, elder care provider sheets, I'd like you to just share a few of the things from that webinar, because I thought you did a great job, and, um, you know, that is, uh, that is available as a recording on the website, and I'll share that link again with everyone, too. So. Okay. okay, so we're going to... Yeah, we're going to follow our standing agenda, so um, the next thing then would be administrator report, but we don't really have any administrators on the call. Um, KAI, so Jonathan, why don't you and Julie update us again on the reporting and different things from your perspective? <clears throat> sure. Hello, everybody. So um, we are in the process of working. We talked last on the standing committee call about setting up um, meetings so that we could brainstorm for the next round of nursing home collaborative best practices. And Julie and I are going to set up that date. Um, and we had some people volunteer to sit down and talk with us so that we could 
brainstorm about the next topic idea. The last one that we did was on dementia care. And just to give a quick update, there was a little bit of um, email er error when we submitted the last best practices to John John. So we're trying to work out the kinks. Uh, for some reason, the document doesn't want to send. So we're trying to find alternative ways for them to get it and review it. Um, but as soon as it's reviewed, then we will have it posted to the National Collaborative Section of the TA Center. So we will keep you all posted on that. Um, as far as, and then in June and July, the UNITE group is responsible for doing two parts, excuse me, two webinar series um, for the LTSS webinars that we do for CMS. And the uh, first one is going to be on dementia care. And then the second one, the tentative topic is tribal leadership. And we're also looking to set up meetings to brainstorm about the approach that we want to take, whether it be panel discussion or uh, having someone present on the topic. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, Dr. Winchester is going to do that first presentation. Julie, am I correct? Yeah, I believe that was the conversation that um, that we had on on Monday. So you have um, Dr. Winchester down just as a sole speaker, or are we looking to have more of a panel discussion like we've had in the past? Yeah, Debbie, it's just the same conversation that we had on Monday. So I know you had mentioned that hopefully having Blythe this you know talk about dementia, or or maybe that was the next meeting. Um, so maybe there was some confusion there, but definitely however you want to, you know, format the webinar. So I, was, I think, yeah, I think what I was thinking, and um, for anyone that was on Monday's call, I was thinking that um, she, Dr. Winchester, needs to be when we talk about it. But and, and I'd like her to obviously be one of the people on that webinar, but my thought was it's simply because we are a collaborative is to have more of a you know, a panel, like maybe have an administrator, have a physician, you know, have different people, maybe a director of nursing, so that we are well represented on that panel with my thought. Yeah, okay. I think that's Perfect. a great well, idea. I like that idea, too. Okay. That sounds great. Lisa, did you want to comment on that? Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I just, I think that... Um, if we're going to be talking about dementia, that having that sort of multidisciplinary team approach discussion, um, it's just that much more meaningful. So if we can get speakers lined up, um, really good speakers, I think that's a great idea. Yeah. 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 And remember, you know, one of the things we need to remember, too, because there's a lot of stuff, stuff out there on dementia, a lot, as I'm sure you're aware. So I was thinking the other day, our our uniqueness here is that we're coming from our perspective, working with tribal elders. What works for tribal elders? You know, and we always, and I'm sure Julie and Jonathan, you know, always think about your audience, like who might be listening to this. Like some of the people listening to these webinars, they're not all working in nursing homes, correct? Right. That's correct. They, would, they may be like Title VI or senior services. So this is a good opportunity on these webinars to really, you know, showcase and present tribal nursing homes in a really positive, you know, light to say, hey, we're working on this. We're concerned about this. We understand best practices. I mean, that's really helpful that the communities are hearing that the tribal nursing homes are being responsive to, you know, best practices. So I think there's a little bit of that, too, along with just sheer, you know, um, just education. You know what I mean? Debbie, this is Lisa again. Um, if possible, we might want to try and see if we can get someone like John Thibodeau on the panel. Uh, he's outstanding and really at least can speak to the Alaska Native cultural component and dementia care. And same with Jordan. Both of those two guys are my ace in the hole here in Alaska. Yes, I agree. And they have both um, spoken on our calls, um, I believe. Don spoke in December and Jordan spoke in January, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. 
That would be a really strong panel, Lisa. That would be a really strong panel with Jordan or Dawn and Blythe and maybe one of our administrators and maybe like Joseph Ray, who's a board member, something like that would be a really strong panel. So, Okay, go, go ahead. I'm sorry to interrupt, Jonathan. Oh, no, you're fine. Um, and then we are working to get the remaining um, recordings posted to the TA Center. Okay. Okay. Julie, is there anything else? No, that's everything. Okay. And you said those recordings will also be available on the YouTube channel, the CMS YouTube channel. Is that correct? Or yeah, yeah. So the the format that we use for the the phone calls is we um, have the audio recording. What we do is we create a video that has like a you know a stand standing image, and then the, the audio is over that image, and so it's placed on YouTube. Okay. And then and we how would we say YouTube? What would we, we search for? No, um, I think it's just a standard uh, nursing home. Let me pull that up really quick. But it, it would we would link directly to that video on the site, which we have done for the the last call or the only call that's up there. So for like the September 15, 2016 meeting on the CMS website on the nursing home collaborative page, uh, it says recording. It, you know, when you click on the link, it takes you to a YouTube mm -hmm. channel, and it says the title is Recording of Unite Meeting Held September 15, 2016. So that's how all of them are titled. Okay, excellent, excellent. Okay, so I'm just going to remind everyone, because KAI is doing an awesome job here. So if you haven't gone, you know, to the long-term support service page, you need to. So CMS.gov, um, Outreach and Education, and then just go to the American Indian Alaska Native. And then you'll see the, all the different, um, go to the long-term and support services. Um, right, Julie, is that, it goes American Indian, Alaska Native, then it goes to what? And then it goes to the LTSS TA Center landing page. Right. And then on that is our Unite Collaborative. And there's a link to our website, too, so www.tribalnursinghomes.weebly.com. And so I, that is a, a feed on there on our website. So all this stuff that we're, you know, anything that I put out to T-R-E-A-C-H dot T-O-L-T-C dot org, all of that stuff gets fed onto our Weebly dot com website. So if you're missing minutes or something, you said, oh, I know Debbie sent that out, but I can't find it in my email, just go to the website because the feed, all that stuff is right there. Okay. Um, okay, anyone else have any questions or for Jonathan or Julie? All right, so we're going to keep moving. Thank you both very, very much. Um, anyone on the grant? I have not heard anything else from Rebecca Drummond. I think we have till May to hear if we get the development grant for this collaborative that will fund and begin July 1st, and we're talking $100,000, so we should be able to... Um, hopefully hire someone to do some of this legwork, which would be really good. Um, the QIO, is there anyone? Lisa, do you want to do any QIO type updates? Um, I'm, I'm happy to just sort of report about what I'm doing on Alaska that may impact the group as a whole. <clears throat> and I guess the one piece that certainly has had some overlap is we've just recently convened a dementia work group out of which there'll be some subgroups, and one of those subgroups is going to be working on a cultural component for dementia care, and Jordan is a part of this group and conversation, but in my mind, um, it needs to be pretty comprehensive, everything from activities to assessment um, to end-of-life you know, uh, end care, so I'm not sure... Um, you know, we just had our first meeting, so there's still a lot ahead of us to do, but I'm hopeful that what we come up with can at least maybe be a framework. If not, you know, the cultures are going to be different depending on the tribe, but we could maybe sketch out sort of the key components 
that need to be addressed when looking when when caring for a, a unique population uh, specific to dementia care. Mm -hmm. And is that a work group kind of a, is it through the QIO, is it statewide, who's, who's on your work group? Um, I pulled together the, the group, so that the QIO is running the dementia work group, the, the big work group, and then the subgroups um, that I'm, I'm putting together, and I'm still in the process of pulling those teams together, will be statewide uh, stakeholders, statewide stakeholders. For example, on, on Jordan's uh, cultural dementia piece, I envision Don Thibodeau being a part of that work group, Melissa Haslin, in addition to folks that, um, like myself, that have some of the clinical background as well. Okay. And as far as you know, this whole idea of identifying key components of dementia care, that's never really happened before in tribe. Not that I'm aware of. I and I, I, in my mind, I'm still formulating what those components are. I think we tend to do things like talk about, um, for example, end of life and how that relates to the different cultures and so forth. But kind of pulling things into one package, because um, to me, something like uh, activities is not usually talked about. But that's huge, and it also impacts things like antipsychotic use. If we don't have good activities that are keeping our elders engaged, you're going to have boredom, and as a result of that, they tend to be more use of antipsychotics. So how we can make sure that whether it's in the Navajo, Cherokee, or Aleut populations, that we have meaningful activities that, protect, that support and surround their culture. Mm -hmm. That's really good, and I and I know other people are on the call if you want to speak up, but um, Hannah, I was working with the University of Arizona on, on writing a, a paper about dementia and spiritual care, and that, I think, is a key component, Lisa, because, you know, the same kind of idea that it's meaningful, what is meaningful if they've always, you know, gone to church or, you know, had the medicine man come to their house, then that's a meaningful activity for them, no matter what stage of the dementia they're at. Absolutely, and you know it's interesting if you listen to Don talk, Don Thibodeau, he talks about in in some of the the Alaska Native culture, um, you don't deliver quote the bad news to the family, you deliver it to the shaman or the priest, and he in turn is the one who is responsible for having that conversation. So I mean, I could see how. A white girl like me could just step right into that one. You know, we, we think we're doing the best for our patients, but unless you are aware of that cultural piece, um, you could have, you know, really do some harm. It's almost like sometimes there's things that go unsaid, and I think that's, that's just the culture. You know, it's, it's, there's things that just go unsaid, and I don't know that everyone always needs to know everything, but that's hard for us as healthcare providers because we're used to being in control and knowing everything. <laughs> well, I've, I've been in Alaska 20 years, more than 20 years, and I'm still learning some of those nuances around the culture because I don't interact with um, the Alaska Native population every day. My husband does. He can, in fact, he's a great resource. But, um, you, you know, since, since we do have such a transient work population coming in and out of our state, that we've, we've got to do a better job of educating and giving those caregivers a better understanding of who they're taking care of. And I'm going to just throw out a resource. When I was um, researching and writing this little care partner sheet on spirituality and dementia, there's an organization I wasn't aware of called Clergy Against Alzheimer's. And um, they actually have a book that they published called Seasons of Caring, Meditations for Alzheimer's and Dementia Caregivers. So it is on, um, you can find it on Amazon. Um, but it looks kind of, it's more for the caregivers, but it looks, it was kind of that spiritual component, which I thought was kind of interesting. And it might not be a real good tribal resource, but I think it would give us some, like I know a lot of our tribal members here, you know, they have different churches coming in, you know, like 
whatever. I mean, there's different churches coming in, so I'm just thinking some tribal members might, you know, really appreciate that. So. Um, Good question. Yeah, anything else, Lisa? Did you have anything else? Not that I can think of. When is that survey that you were doing, when is that going to go out to all the tribal nursing homes in Alaska and you reach? When is that going to go out? You know? um, it's already gone. Oh, okay. Is that the same one then you sent to our collaborative members or no? Yep. Yep. Oh, the only, okay. Only just the one. Yeah, and the only person I've heard back from is Val. Okay, I thought we got five responses. Uh, in Alaska, I'm sorry. Oh, okay, okay. So how many actual people did you send that out to, like 40 or 50? Uh, I think it's, I want to say 38. Okay. The number that comes from, that's an off the top of my head number, but for some reason I want to say it was asking me if I wanted to send 38 reminders. Okay, okay. So just quickly so you all understand, this was the survey that went out on the Survey Monkey where it talked about dementia care. And when Lisa sent it out to all the nursing homes in Alaska, she also sent it out to all the nursing homes that are part of this collaborative. She only had one person respond. So I asked her for this meeting. Um, we're about ready to let her start. We're going to have her bring up a few of those key questions maybe and see if we can get some feedback from this group on the phone. So hold on to that thought. I'm going to leave plenty of time for that. So um, let's see. I'm not going to do the traditional food. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that today because I think we're running short on time. And we did talk about that a little bit on our steering committee call. Um, we are reaching out to some new members, so there's some activity with that. And I'm also reaching out to Dr. Bruce Fink and Cynthia LeCount. Um, we did get an email from her saying she's been sick and that uh, she's getting back into the swing of things and we'll try to be back on these calls again. So we're looking to put the Unite Collaborative on both of those websites. And I did go and look at both of those websites. And I think there might be a place for us on the IHS website because they have a spot there where they are soliciting best practices, and I think we may be able to fit in there. So I'll send an email to Bruce Fink and see what he thinks about that. Okay? So um, I think we're ready to do our clinical track, and um, Hannah, I'll give you about um, maybe 10 minutes um, to go ahead and just share a little bit about the care partner, elder care provider, and then a little bit about what, what were your findings on the use of antipsychotic medications. Sure. Uh, yeah, I won't. I won't take up too much of your time because I know we're running a little um, short on time. Uh, but right. just just to talk about the the elder care provider sheets and the care partner provider sheets are a a, a large part of our uh, workforce enhancement grant, and there are resources for for providers and for care partners, which we define as uh, community health workers, caregivers, family members, community members, and they they are on over about 50 topics for the provider sheets and anything from um, delirium, dementia, to the use of canes, physical activity, the importance of physical activity. And those elder care provider sheets are um, aimed again towards to providers. And they are single page front and back sheets that are in a very approachable format and they're um, for interprofessional cl clinicians. And I can, I'll send out the, the link to all of those. We have all of them on our website uh, with a link to all of the PDFs. And they are, um, they're for use for, for everyone. Um, and we also, if you're interested in being on, which I think Debbie does send them out. Um, I do. Through Rachel. I think you do send them out to treat, right? Or to the... I do. I have okay. them, yeah. And then I let her know that I've been doing that, yeah. Okay. And then the, the care partner sheets, which... Um, might be very useful for the nursing home as well, um, for CNAs in particular, um, and caregivers. Those, and a lot of our sheets are related to Alzheimer's disease and uh, related dementias. These are single uh, page fact sheets that can be used by anyone who's providing care for older adults. And they have uh, basic background information, helpful tips, and uh, also sometimes community resources 
about the topics. Um, and all in those range in topics from <clears throat> what is dementia to exercise to end of life care to caregiver stress, assessing pain and dementia, and those we have found are very useful for our um, community members and uh, care partner population. And those are also available in Spanish as well, if that helps anyone. And so those are our care partner and elder care provider sheets, and I can send Debbie the links so that she can pass those on to you. And you're more than welcome to use them in any of your education and training. And um, and if you do, please let us know. We'd appreciate that as well. And as far as the, the presentation on Monday is was a part of our uh, Advances in Aging lecture series, which we should also be sending out maybe to the group, which happens once a month, and they're archived lectures that um, are recorded and can be seen on the web, and they're about different uh, geriatric topics from experts in the field. And I spoke about the variation in use of antipsychotic medications in nursing homes in the United States. And this comes from, I can send the paper out, um, a PRISMA literature review about <clears throat> focusing on antipsychotic medications in nursing homes and the facility characteristics associated with use. So I'll just um, tell a little bit about um, some of the results and then leave it to, if you're interested, to look at the paper or uh, listen to the talk. But some of the results were that the antipsychotic medications were uh, varied based on geographic location of facilities, and the facilities in the West had less use of antipsychotic medications than the facilities in the South and the Northeast. Hawaii had the least amount of uh, use, and uh, Mississippi and, and those states in the Deep South had the greatest amount of use. Uh, some of the staff characteristics associated with use were the amount of staff, the increased number of RNs per resident showed a decreased use of antipsychotic um, medications, as well as increased amount of CNAs showed decreased uh, use of antipsychotic medications. Uh, the presence of physicians and mental health care uh, physicians and psychiatrists actually showed increased use of antipsychotic medications. The um, occupational characteristics that were associated included percent occupancy, which was associated with uh, the more, the higher percent occupancy, the decreased use, which is most likely due to uh, increased funds and resources. And then the type of occupancy, the more Medicaid residents a facility had the more use of antipsychotics, uh, which is most likely due to uh, decreased funding as Medicaid doesn't pay as much as private insurance. And then the the market characteristics, as I stated earlier, being uh, the presence of competition lowered use. So if there were more than one nursing home to choose from, then they, were, um, they had competitive rates and less use of antipsychotics. And then finally, the number of deficiencies. Uh, the more deficiencies the facility had, the more use. So those are just a, is a quick summary of some of the characteristics associated with use. And uh, the goal of this study was to, to lay out these uh, facility characteristics as the groundwork for possible interventions. And as um, stated earlier in the phone call, I think as a lot of it could be the more resources, the more social activities, as you stated, um, available for these patients, and and that really is shown to decrease the use. Um, so that's just a quick summary. Um, again, I'll send all the info to Debbie to, to pass on. So thanks. Thank you, Hannah. Does anyone have any specific questions for Hannah? Thank you so much. We may be able to tap into some of that for our best practice report. Anyone? Hannah, this is Lisa. Um, I was, as you were talking, I was pulling up your website and looking at some of the um, um, available topics, and I was, I, I didn't see, or maybe I just didn't get there yet, but there's a couple of topics that keep bubbling up here in Alaska around dementia care, and that has to do with um, inappropriate sexual behaviors and also uh, aggressive residents. Um, for example, there was a nursing home that had a, a gentleman who was 
a domestic ab- abuser um, who was confused and felt any female staff was his wife and he could beat her. So okay. those are some of the kinds of issues I know that my folks are struggling with, and I didn't know if you had any partner sheets on those kinds of topics. I don't think we have any partner sheets on those kind of topics, but thank you for bringing up because we, we are continually writing them. And so having your input about topics that are necessary, we can write them actually, and then you will have them. So I will, I'll bring those up to my, to my team and see the interest of, um, and if we have any experts that can write um, sheets on those topics. And I'll also ask because they might have additional resources. So I'll look into that for you. And what's your name Thank again? Thank you so much. My name is Lisa Johnson. I'm with the QIO in Alaska. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Lisa. I can connect yeah, to him if you need her email. So there is, Lisa, I have some fairly current stuff on sexually inappropriate behavior because we addressed that here. And that was something that I did some research on and looked up some stuff. It's not formatted like what Hannah can give you, but I'll send you what I have if it's helpful, okay? Oh, I'd love to see it. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Hannah. I keep waiting. I- I keep waiting for the IT department to, like, think I'm looking at pornography or something because of my Google searches. <laughs> uh, okay, so, Lisa, I'm going to let you have the rest of the time for this meeting. I'm going to let you, um, if everyone could just participate. I know, I understand you don't all work at tribal nursing homes. I get that. But anything you want to just throw in here based from your experience working with nursing homes would be great. Um, uh, I've asked Lisa to just kind of pull some of the survey questions and we're just going to talk about a couple of them right now. Okay. And Debbie, I'll, I'll leave it to you to take the notes on, on the conversation. Yeah, I'm, typing, I'm typing as we go. <laughs> All right. Perfect. Thank you. So the, the, the survey monkey that went out was, uh, 38 questions long, which is rather lengthy and broken into two sort of sections. One section was around um, dementia, dementia care, and the other was around um, board relations. So when we, the, the first section I'll talk about that had to do with the dementia care piece. So we asked um, nursing homes uh, what the model or approach that um, facilities are taking to providing dementia care. So is there, you know, a particular model that's used or is there uh, a, a particular approach that is used in terms of models for dementia care? And um, kind of all over the board, do you want me to go over results or, at all, Debbie, or just talk about the question? I mean, it, it's okay. I mean, I'd like to get feedback from this group, but if you want to give a couple of examples so they kind of know where you're going with that, I think that'd be okay. Okay, sure. Yeah, I don't want to skew the results. Um, But in terms of models or approaches, I think what we were just hoping to find out is um, do you have a model, actually? You know, do you use a person-centered care approach model um, or is there some other... um, And and actually, as I'm looking at the results, most folks don't have a particular model that they use, at least from the few responses we got back, but if there is one out there that's being used, that's something that we were hoping to kind of glean from the the results. Hmm. Um, The next question. um, Let's let's stop for a minute. Does anyone have any thoughts on that or have any, you know, insight into, you know, if you're going to start, if you're a tribal nursing home or a nursing home and you're working on you know, having this, um, providing dementia care, you know, are there models out there? Hannah, you might have some information on that. I can get back to it. I don't have any information personally myself, but I can look mm-hmm. into it for you. <laughs> I mean, because I know when we started this collaborative, one of the roles of the, the GWAP or the Geriatric Workforce Enhancement Program was to be available to provide some resources. So I think that would be great if you could if you could kind of get back to us on that. I, Lisa, the only thing I can say from our perspective here is we, I spent, about a year ago, we finalized a proposal to our board for a dementia care program here. We wanted to do like a day program. 
And it was a lot of work. I'd say two to three years worth of work, lots of meetings. And it was basically came out of our person-centered care committee. So these were all people that were very committed to person-centered care. And that's where a lot of the ideas came from. A lot of it had to do with, with choice, you know, and with residents, um, you know, treating them like we wanted to be treated, um, that type of idea. I, I think in the in in the in-between lines and in some of the more open-ended dialogue questions, that's exactly... And in conversation with the nursing homes out in the field, I think that's the common, general, and appropriate approach that most of these nursing homes are taking. I mean, it, it's pretty simplistic. I mean, I'm sure Hannah could find us some pretty involved models, but I think ultimately it, it boils down to treating people like you want to be treated. Knowing no, the rest, not knowing their preferences, yep. And, and, you know, one of the things in all these years that I've been on webinars and whatnot, for root cause analysis, it usually boils down to an unmet need. And, you know, what are those unmet needs? Is it spiritual? Is it, you know, toileting? What is it that we're missing? What is it that this person needs that we're not giving to them? Well, and I, I like the model. And there's a palette of care model to dementia care that I like only because they substitute the word behaviors and use the word distress. Yeah. yeah. Your resident is in distress when they are acting out. And I think when we use behaviors, we imply that they need to kind of get control of themselves when really they're, they're trying to tell us of an unmet need. And this is just how they, they do it. That's how they communicate. Um, well, and I think the other thing that distress implies is urgency. So you don't get into this, you know, mentality of, well, you know, they've always behaved that way. Because behavior is kind of, you know, well, that's just how Lisa is. She just acts that way all the time. Whereas distress implies that you better do something. This is this is important. The urgency level goes up, I would think. Well, I think as caregivers, too, we hate to think of our patients being in distress. You know, that's, 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 a, right. that's a cry for help, and I'm a nurse, so I'm running in, you know. Right, right. And that's true. I think that is exactly what we need. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. we do need to do something. I mean, that is important to not ignore it. Or medicate it. <laughs> Even more so. Right. right. Um, um, so then, yeah, as I said, there's not a whole lot in, in terms of response, specific response, but I, I think that in terms of a best practice, and a generalization that that person a person centered approach a resident uh, and in Alaska we're talking about the resident as the the loci of control and putting them at the top of the org chart um, that kind of stuff so I think that's a, a a good best practice approach that this collaborative can promote. Okay, that's I like that because that's kind of what Quapi is too, which we're going to all be you know, surveyed with is saying you cannot miss out on, you know, the, the people like the CNAs, you can't just ignore their input because their input is critical. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have to figure out how to get them to these meetings so they can provide some of their feedback and input. I think that's really important. Yep, I agree 100%. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, the next minute. Should try one more question on dementia so you can get a little more feedback. Jonathan, do you or Julie or Hannah, do any of you have any thoughts on what was just said? No, nothing that jumps right out. I mean... <clears throat> I mean, some of you might have experience with dementia even within your own family. I mean, does what we're saying make sense, or does it? No, I agree. I mean, with my experience as a nurse in nursing homes, that um, I really like that you're taking the word distress instead of behavior. I think that really changes the mindset. And, and also something that was brought up in the talk, someone in my talk, someone had asked if there had been any 
um, studies or anything looking into instead of calling them patients, more uh, focusing them the person as like a residence and um, and not just as like another number. Really, if just by simply changing from patient to resident, or as you said, from behavioral symptoms to distress, if that affects how um, affects care, if that changes how we care for the for for these um, people that are in distress. So, yeah, I just agree. Yeah, and also, Lisa, I wanted to mention real quickly that on our person-centered care team, we don't call it even resident-centered care anymore. We call it autumn-centered care. So we're part of the Tahona Autumn Nation, so it's even more specific to say it's culturally specific. So we call it OCC, autumn-centered care. Just I like that. Care. Yeah, and you could do that for any tribe. You could call it, you know whatever, Eastern, you know, Shoshone-centered care, FCC, you know, you could come up with every tribe has their own version of, the, of whatever their centered care looks like for the for that tribe or for that group of folks. I think I'm going to be swiping that term and handing that right over to Jordan and his team as they start working on that cultural component of dementia. Let's call it Alaska. Well, unfortunately, we've got a lot of different Alaska Native tribes um, so now that I think about it, that may backfire wildly, but yeah. I so is there one other question? Is there one other question we can just touch on real quickly? Um, you know, the, the thing that was interesting is I was just kind of skimming again, looking to, to see, um, the goals of care are almost all across the survey. I think everyone is saying the same thing that you want. That the biggest goal is to provide really good, solid cultural dementia care, um, provide a high quality of life. That was said um, on multiple. So, you know, really, again, keeping that resident at the center and making, well, hoping and helping to make their life as meaningful and robust as possible. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, you know, one yeah. thing, Lisa, um, if we redo this survey and make it a little shorter and try it again, we might want to ask for a story. Tell me a story. Tell me something at your facility that's worked. You know, give me a little story about something that's worked. Because I think when we do our webinars, it's going to be really helpful to be able to tell stories. And I'm sure Blythe has many. I'm sure you have some. I'm sure all of us could come up with one. But let's let's see if we can get some stories back. What do you think? Well, I think the only challenge, and it's just the survey monkey challenge, is people just want to click a box and be done and move on. And that would, I, I think that when asking folks to to write too much in a narrative, that you probably won't get a whole lot of response. But I do think it's you know we've got the contact info built into this, so we can always follow up with people and call them back and. You know, hey, it sounds like you've done a really great job in cor- incorporating culture. You've talked about how you use the medicine man and cleansing up your facility. Can you talk to me for five minutes about that? And I, I'm, I'm guessing we may have better luck that route. But it, I, and it's a great idea. Don't get me wrong. I'm just worried that we're we're having a hard time getting responses as it is. So, you know what? Well, okay, so responses are super important. We've got to get them. Um, uh, Julie and Jonathan, maybe you could help us in this area. So if we if we can identify three or four people that we want to call and do a, a phone interview, can you record that for us? Could you be part of that and help us with that? Yeah, I don't do a lot. We probably, I mean, we we have different methods of recording out. So yeah, we could record it. Because if we set up these phone calls, Lisa, that would be great if KAI could record it. You know, that could even be a powerful thing to embed into a PowerPoint or into a webinar. And when I was just thinking, I was just figuring in Alaska that I was going to call my three. I mean, Val's already responded to the survey, but I, I, it's manageable for me to call my two other nursing homes and and have them fill fill out the survey with me online, or or to get that feedback and include some stories from them. But that's only a little part of the rest of the U.S. So I'm not sure how the Unite Collaborative is going to get the the rest of these responses because they're 
They're, they're hanging out there. Maybe what um, we can do when we edit the survey okay. is next include... Time... Go ahead, Jonathan. No, I just wanted to say that when we edit and change the survey, if we maybe not asking for the story in within the survey, but maybe asking a question if they have a story and they would they be willing to share it, and then that way we can reach out to them that way. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, that would work. So just um, go ahead, um, Lisa, and just in your survey, if you pick, what, five or six questions, and then say, would you be willing to be interviewed five or ten minutes to talk about a story, something that's really where you've been able to provide very robust quality care to one of your elders that had dementia? Mm -hmm. What really worked? Yep, I'm taking that. Okay, I think that I think that would be wonderful, and that would be a real strong way to end the webinar too. You know what I mean? Well, the stories are always really powerful. Yeah, you can yeah, end people with can that. make better with stories. You want to elicit a little emotion? I think it's important. Sounds good. Because that can really motivate people to do something different. Okay. All right. Thank you, Lisa. We're pretty much at the end of our time. So our next call is April 20th, which is quite a ways away. Happy Easter's and subtle hit in between. <clears throat> the next steering call is actually um, Monday, April 10th, for those of you on the steering committee. And the T-tag call, by the way, I called, um, emailed John John. That was not held. Uh, on Tuesday, he said it will be held on the 11th of April, but they didn't have one in March. And then I'll follow up with him on the number that he's assigned to us because for some reason it's not working. Okay? Sounds good. So when, you, when you send out that abbreviated survey, if you could CC me on that, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to respond to that and just put something in my own words about how really critical and important it is for everybody to complete and see if we can... If we can, uh, you know, I don't know. The, the problem is, Debbie, I, it's mailed out of SurveyMonkey, so I have no way of copying you. I can include you um, in the survey, but even yeah. if you reply, it won't go to everybody that gets the survey. That's fine. Did you not get my response the first time? Because I actually completed that survey. Yeah, I did. Oh, you did. Okay. Did. Yeah, all right. Yep. All right. Thank you, everyone. And thank you, Hannah. I'll let you get back directly to Lisa. I'll send you her email. All right. Great. Thanks, everybody. All right. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye.